Okay, Max. Okay. Oh, I had two. Two. Okay, yeah. then uh, say the two then. Say the okay, two. Okay, so say the two together. Uh, price. What's the difference? Yeah, is there a difference? Oh, yeah. So that's simple. So then the quick answer is this: <clears throat> is that if you look at the book of Luke or and Matthew, Bible says, "Thou shalt call his name Jesus." Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. So that's what Jesus means. Christ, what that means is Christos from Greek, and that actually means anointed. Christ is uh, an English word that came from Greek, actually, uh, through Latin and etc. And Christ means anointed. So Jesus would refer to his human nature, his name, and then Jesus Christ would include the uh, anointed nature. Lord Jesus Christ would be the full trinity right there. Lord representing the Father, Jesus the Son, Christ which means anointed, you can guess would be what? The spirit, because the spirit was used in anointing. Second? Uh, are the, uh, the ah, good. that's a, my, that's a very... My proof text would be... Uh, Please. Yeah, Corinthians... Uh, 15, yeah, 15, 15 one, correct. Uh -huh. And then Revelation... Uh, 2 and 3, I'm sure. Uh, no, Revelation 6, uh, six. verse 13. Hmm, okay. Oh, let me look at that again. I did verse by verse on this. So. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Ah, okay then. Okay, I see. 41. Got it, got it. Okay then. So this one, Revelation 6, is a cataclysmic event. Yeah. Uh, cataclysmic. <laughs> I'm going to be so embarrassed. You know what? I'm not going to embarrass myself by just telling you. <laughs> I'm not going to embarrass myself. I'm not doing this, okay? All right, so <laughs> just abbreviate it, yeah. CE, cataclysmic event. This is not common era, okay? By the way, it's not common era. Cataclysmic event, okay? So, the, so, the <laughs> so there's a, a cataclysmic event about the stars falling. That's what it is, yeah. 1 Corinthians 15, 41. Okay, so your question is actually going to be the most interesting one. It's going to be the most interesting one. So, yeah. So, that, <laughs> What's your question? Green blood or something like that? All right. 1 Corinthians 15, 41. It says right here, There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Look at, and if you look at Revelation 2 to 3, which is what I thought you were going to do, it's talking about the seven stars, which are the seven churches. All right, so here's the thing, is that the stars are not literally the saints, but here's something, the stars can be very closer to the saints than you think. You might say, how so? Because 1 Corinthians 15, 41 says that when we have our glorified appearance, we're going to be like the stars. Yes. And then the churches are represented as stars. You know what's also assimilated with churches, uh, with the stars? Angels. Yes. What are Christians likened to? John chapter 1, verse 12. Sons of God. Angels. What did Jesus say at the book of Matthew? We're going to be like the angels in heaven. Genesis chapter 6 says, these are the sons of God, which are referring to the fallen angels. See that? So the Christians are going to be closer to the stars than you think, even though we're not literally the stars. The reason why we're not literally the stars is obviously because of Genesis chapter 1. The angels already existed long ago, but God created the stars in the universe over there. So in, think about this. The Mormons teach about uh, their own saints inhabiting the stars and Satan trying to uh, alien activity and all that, trying to colonize planets and stars. There might be something to that where the saint... Because God says a new heaven and a new earth given to the saints. There's something that could be connected to us where you might have a, you might have a star with you, etc. Okay, yes, sir. I was just terrified. I was wondering about Genesis because now it makes sense because I was thinking because in glory, that would make sense for saints because each one would have their own glory. Like you would have their own for example. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that sh also shows right here that uh, it's going to be a, a fantastic thing up in heaven. You're going to see different glories, lights and all that. It's going to be fantastic. Brother Sean. Okay, so it's, I understand it's kind of a, more of an open question. So uh -huh. I feel like it's to be answered. 
Okay. But I'm always wondering, you know that everything was set up at uh, the Lord's first coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, everything was set up where Israel still had free will. Mm -hmm. um, had they accepted Jesus, mm -hmm. John would mm -hmm. have been Elijah mm -hmm. and all that stuff would have gone down. Mm -hmm. But one thing I've always wondered is when you take into account the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. How, if at all, would have would that have all played out? Because obviously, if mm -hmm. Israel would have accepted Jesus as their Messiah, there mm -hmm. there would be no book of Revelation, mm -hmm. I guess, since mm -hmm. it wasn't written until mm -hmm. John was on Patmos. Mm -hmm. um, but if some of that, like, would there still have been the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast and all this? this so then, what would have happened? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, go yeah. Ahead. Like, <coughs> what would what would the end times have played out like? Had they accepted Jesus as their Messiah, would it have just? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they still would have. Ha would they have still had to finish out mm -hmm. the time of Jacob's trouble, and then mm -hmm. it just goes into the millennium, and there's mm -hmm. no, there's no mark of the beast, mm -hmm. uh, and all that stuff. Like, mm -hmm. how, how would that? So then, in the dispensationalism, we mainly put four different timelines, even though there it's up to like seven to eight, or even uh, yeah, seven to eight. But the church age right here, it's distinct. This time period is they're concerning concerning the Gentiles. See, they received it. All three is focusing on this nation here. If the Gentiles are going to get saved, they have to participate with Israel's program. Why? Because they forsook what Paul, what not Paul, what Sean mentioned right here. I'm sure he wants to be like Paul one day. But anyway. <laughs> When Jesus died on the cross, you got to realize this. There's a transition here. What? And the four Gospels as well. Yep. There's a transition going on. The four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's why I meant. So during this timeline of Acts, this was transition. Why? Based on this transition, if they would receive or reject. Je Jews rejected, then hence the Gentiles came in. What if the uh, Jews accepted? Gentiles would not have come in. That's why, what does this mean? Transition. That's why this thing is not marked out like this. It's more honestly like Old Testament, tribulation, church age is like this. Yep. Like in there. It could have been gone or in. All right. Grafted in. That's a good verse right there. See that? You're using your head. Romans chapter 11. See, they were grafted in right there. See? But if they weren't grafted in, it would have been one tree. Yeah. So then, with this Old Testament continuing on to the tribulation, what would have happened? God had to do two comings, no doubt. So what would have happened was like this, is that if the Jews accepted... What did Acts chapter 2 say? Acts chapter 2, Peter said, repent, because the time of refreshing is at hand. Acts 2, 3 and 4. Get ready, the king is coming. See that? Jesus, what did he say? The kingdom of heaven is what? At hand. Meaning it would have came down. See that? So if they received it, if they accepted it, it would have happened, it would have occurred. So then what would have happened is that if they accepted it, then who is the man of sin? Who is the Antichrist? When you read even a Pauline epistle, 2 Thessalonians 2, Paul knew who he was. It was, Ro it was a Roman Caesar. That's why doesn't it make sense that if that this one would have been the Antichrist rather than this one? This is why did this guy come in? The transition. This, so Rome, that's why Rome changed too. See that? Rome changed because this time of God's program changed. Satan changed his program as God changed his program. See that? So it would not have been the Catholic Church. That's why the Bible never says Catholic Church. It says Babylon. Why? Because it will morph into different forms as time passes by. See that? So then it would have been the Roman Caesar as the Antichrist. And then the Jews, they would have their rapture. You might say, why would they have their rapture? The reason why they have their rapture is because Jesus Christ spoke about the parables many times, about a rapture that would come down and then rapture his children. Now the thing is this, is that if they receive their Messiah, remember, 
the Old Testament saints, they had their resurrection, right? If they accepted Christ, they could have had their pre-trib rapture. And then the remaining Jews, they could have had their post-trib rapture. There would have been that pre-trib rapture. And if I'm wrong about that, then it would at least be the post-trib rapture. You might say, why do you believe pre-trib, Pastor? Because Paul mentioned that the ones who are believers in Christ, God would take them home to heaven. And Christ would do the same thing with his children as well if they accepted him. But not only that, Israel has to finish its judgment according to the book of Daniel. So according to the book of Daniel, the remaining nation would have to go through it. You might say, why is there a leftover? Because even in the church age and this tribulation division, in this tribulation timeline, there are Jews left behind at the post-trib rapture, according to the parable of Matthew 25. So then those remaining Jews, uh, there are five foolish virgins, five wise, and they're saints, 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 not the Antichrist people, saints. So we got believers left behind, believers raptured. So these re remaining believers left behind, they would have been the one holding out, according to the old, many Old Testament books, where these Jews have to gather together, arm themselves, and that's their everlasting, uh, that, not the everlasting God, that's the gospel of armed warfare, according to the book of Hebrews chapter 4, uh, Zechariah chapter probably 12. So according to these passages right here, if it's not, then it's at least chapter 10 through 12. So in, according to these passages, there's a gospel of armed warfare that the leftover Jews would prepare against the Antichrist. Uh, according to the book of Acts, then when would be that pre-trib rapture? How do we know it's pre-trib? Because of Acts 7. Jesus was getting up Stephen. ready, to, because of Stephen, ready to rapture his children. That's why, that's a pre-trib rapture right there. See that? If they accepted their Messiah. If they, and then concerning about the book of Revelation not written? No, I believe it would have been. Why? Because the book of Daniel, the final chapter said, close it until the time of the end. The time of the end, it will be revealed even more. So then what would have happened then? It's no problem. Jesus said, what did he say about John? He's going to live till I what? what? That could go for two ways. That could go for two ways. It could be he would live during that first century where he can jump ahead of time, which he did, right? He jumped ahead of time to see Christ coming, but he, he didn't live all the way through the church age, or it would have been that first century. He would, God would have just had him right at an earlier day and age. Could he have been left behind at Acts 7? Maybe. Maybe it's possible. But Jesus gave a promise. He will live till I come. Yep. So maybe he could have written it at Acts 6. Maybe the Lord could have done that. He could have written Revelation at Acts 6. If not, the Lord could do it one way or another. He could have John write the book of Revelation probably up in heaven and the angel bring it down to the people down there. That could be possible. You might say, I don't believe that. Didn't Revelation 14, the angel come down to give the everlasting gospel to the people? Wow, that's true. There's your answer. Wow. Next. <laughs> oh, yeah, you had... I was just going to yeah. say, uh, it's not a question. I was just going to uh -huh. say to support that. Yes. Even if it was only because mm -hmm. if you assume those things are written, mm -hmm. still the, it's only the Old Testament at that time was written. Correct. There's still Song of Solomon. Correct. talks about preacher rapture. And Correct. Still Enoch. Correct. It still has to be a type of uh -huh. someone that never dies. Correct. But I also believe this. I strongly believe that God would have written out more books for them. Because of Daniel 12, he gave a promise that he's going to full, he, the, wrap up the time of the end book because it's going to be unsealed for the other people. Not only that, James, the book of James, was written before he got beheaded as well. Yeah. yeah. So God could have had these things written. Not only that. You already got uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus giving the tribulation gospel.